Hi students, welcome to another session of programming using C language. Myself, Jasleen Kaur, Assistant Professor in CSE Department from Chandigarh University. To communicate with computer, we write some set of instructions to get some task done from the computer. These set of instructions are always written in the programming language, which are easier for the humans to write and understand, right? However, the complex part is to convert these high level languages into the machine level languages, right? And this process of converting your high level or the low level code into the machine level code is known as the compilation process. So in this lecture, we are going to learn what is a compilation process? What are the various processes responsible for converting your C or C++ program into the machine source code. So we are going to learn about the following translators. The very first one we have is the preprocessor. Then we are going to learn about the compiler, assembler. And then after this, we will learn about what is a linker and what is a loader. So let's begin. Let's begin with the basic definition of the compilation process. So what do you mean by compilation process? A compilation process is the process of converting your C source file into the running state executable file. Right? So firstly, you are going to write down some set of instruction in any text editor, or you can write it down in an, any ID. So let us say, the name of the source file that you have written is try.c. Make sure that you are ending the extension of your source file with .c extension, okay? Do not just leave it as try only. It is possible that you can save it with the try.txt. So don't save your try.txt, save it with try.c extension, right? So this source file, when you're going to compile it, in the end, the output result that you are going to receive it it will be your try.exe, right? So ever wonder that how this process, how this source file is getting converted into try.exe, right? So in this session, we are going to learn about this one only, right? So under this process, there are some several translators that play their role. Not only one translators, there are number of translators. So let us discuss that what are those translators which are going to convert your program into the exe executable state, right? Okay. So under this, the very first step that we have is the role of the preprocessor. So step one is going to be your preprocessor, right? So first, there will be preprocessor. After this, preprocessor next will come the compiler. Then after the compiler, the third translator that you will have is the assembler. Then we will have a linker. And in the end, we will have another program, which we call it as a loader. So there are total five programs or the softwares which play a key role in the process of compiling a program from .c to .exe. Now let's understand about each of this process in detail. So let's talk about the very first one that we have is preprocessor. So what is a preprocessor? Preprocessor basically, it processes some data before your compilation actually begins, right? So pre means, pre means first, right? And process means to perform some operations at early stage. Right, so pre-processing, it is going to process, which of the following operations? It is going to process first, 
some macro definitions if you have in your program plus it is also going to process the head of file inclusions okay moreover in the header file we further have the function declarations so function declarations will also be processed so these are the two things that the preprocessor is going to cover the macro definitions and the header file inclusions what are macro definitions what are header files these you are going to learn a bit more about in the c programming sessions when you are going to learn how to write a c program right okay now when the preprocessor is going to preprocess your program first before handling it over to the compiler so this preprocessor is going to convert your dot c file into the some another extension let us see over here so this is your let us say this is your try dot c source file right and the preprocessor is going to convert into the preprocessed format and the extension of dot c will be converted into dot i right and this will be done by the preprocessor right so this is your step one so this is your source file preprocessor is going to take the source file as the input right and it will give you the output as try dot i right okay now next after the preprocessor let's have a look at the another second component of the compilation process which is the compiler now what the compiler will do compiler basically it is going to take this preprocessed file let me write over here it will take the preprocessed file as an input and convert it into the low level code for example assembly code so what the compiler is going to do compiler is going to take this preprocessed file which is which will be produced by the preprocessor and is going to convert it into the low level code so here you have this preprocessed file dot i right and then there will be a compiler so what this compiler will do compiler is going to convert this try dot i into the low level code and its extension will be try dot s okay so here you will have the another file try dot s and it will be produced by the compiler right so first you have the preprocessor preprocessor is going to preprocess your program before handling it over to the compiler right what the preprocessing will include it will include the macro definitions plus the header file inclusions then the compiler will take that preprocessed data and it will convert it into the low level code which we also call it as the assembly code right now what do you mean by low level so basically low level program or low level instructions are those instructions whose syntax is almost similar to the machine language whose syntax is similar to the machine language and machine code which consists of the binary code right it is difficult for us to understand as a humans we cannot remember the numbers but we can remember the alphabets or the words right so but the machine it can understand only the numbers which are zeros and ones right so this assembly code or the machine code is completely low level for us right we cannot understand it so that's why we call it as a low level language right okay then after the compiler the next translator that we have in the process of compilation the third one is going to be the assembler now what will the role of the assembler any guess so assembler is going to perform the conversion from the low level code to the machine code right 
So what the assembler will do? It will take the assembly code and produce object code. But wait, hold on. This object code is still not the executable. So you need to modify your definition and you will write it will produce the non-executable object code. So after the compiler, now next there will be another software standing in a queue and the name of the software will be assembler. Right? And what this assembler will do? This assembler will take this assembly code or your assembly instructions file try.s and will convert it into the non-executable object code. So it will be try.obj or the object code. Okay. But it is still in the non-executable format. Then after this, after the assembler, next the role that we have is for the linker. So the fourth one you have is linker. Now what the linker will do? Linker is, linker is actually going to convert this non-executable object code into the executable one. So here we have the linker. Right, so linker is going to accept try.obj as an input and it will produce try.obj in the executable format. That will be try.exe, right? So you see that how many processes you have that are responsible for converting your single .c extension into the try.exe file. Okay, and all these intermediate files that are being converted. So here you have only single file, right? In which you have written your program, which is try.c. When you compile it on any IDE, right? In the end, you get one exe file, which is try.exe. But the rest of the files are completely not visible, right? So in the process of converting your .c into .exe extension, these intermediate files are generated in a fraction of seconds and then immediately they are removed by the system. Right. However, there are some steps that you can execute to check these files getting generated through the command line only. It is possible only through the command line. Okay. Now, there is one more step which is missing regarding the linker, one more important information. So for that, I need to Clear my this screen. So what the linker do, instead of it not only converts your high level, sorry, your non-executable object code into the executable object code, but it also links your multiple object files into the single object files. But it also links multiple object files, multiple object files into single object file. Now, in which case you can have multiple object files. For example, let's say you are working on some project, okay? You have created your project, let's say library management system, LMS, right? For this project, you may have number of source files. One will be your main source file, right? In which you are going to perform the execution. Then another one, you will have some another header files also, right? Your own header files, user defined header files, right? You may have some other .c files also that are part of this project. So when you are going to compile all these files, so all these files will be converted into the obj files. So here you will have separate obj file, obj1. This will also produce another separate obj file, which will be obj2. And this will also produce another separate obj file that will be obj3. Right. So here 
linker is going to merge all these three obj files into the single obj file and this will be done by the linker only right and in the end it will convert this single obj file into the dot exe file extension and then you are ready to run your program but hold on before that there is one more step which is left after the linker the next step that we have is of the loader so what could be the role of the loader loader means if i ask you to load that products number of boxes in a truck it means you have to keep them in a truck right similarly when we talk about the loader concept in the memory it means that loader is going to load the produced exe file that is generated by the linker into ram in your random access memory for execution right ram means random access memory okay so this was all about the compilation process right all right so now you have learned about the compilation process in a theoretical way and i hope the all the concepts of the compilation process starting from the preprocessor to the compiler assembler linker and loader all their definitions and their functionality is now well clear so now i'm going to show you the practical demonstration that how your c program or a c++ program file it gets converted into the executable file and what are the various intermediate files that gets generated right so let us start with the practical demonstration so right now you might be able to see my screen as i have shared a terminal in my laptop which is the mac operating system if you are using the windows operating system you need to open the command prompt from your search bar right right now i am in my current directory which is this lean directory which is my name okay so you'll be in your own username directory so i want to check what are the various files or directories or the programs i have currently in my folder so for that i'm going to type list command and if you type the list command you will get the folders or the documents that you have in your this folder so this is going to be my program and the name of my program that i'm going to compile for the demonstration procedure is try.c in this program i have simply added only one line in the main function and that is the printf command and in that printf command i'm going to print hello world so let us start with the practical part all right so now let me show you this Uh, the entire complete current folder also so currently this is my folder right and here is my program let me open the program for you okay so i hope the program is now it's now the font size is well visible so this is the program which i'm going to compile and i'm going to run through the command prompt or through the terminal now moving on again back to the terminal So the very first command that i need to type is firstly the you are going to check whether you have gcc installed in your system for that you are going to mention gcc minus minus version okay so if you are able to execute this command without getting any error then it means the gcc is now completely working in your terminal or in your command prompt and now you can further carry on with the next instruction so after this what is your very first process in the compilation process the very first process that you have is a pre processor right what the pre processor do it is going to convert your dot c file into dot i file or the pre processed file right so i am going to write the command which is gcc minus e the name of my program is try dot c right 
and the preprocessed file that I will get is try.i. Press enter. Now, as soon as you press enter, what will happen? The com your compilation process will stop after generating the preprocessed file. Now you have converted your C program into the preprocessed file and then you have stopped the compilation. Now let us see that whether our this file has been generated or not. So for that, let me share my folder again. So as you can see in this folder, so this is my try.c file. And here we got try.i, which is your pre-processed file. You wanna see what's the content inside this pre-processed file? Let me open it for you. Okay. So I hope you can see this pre-processed file. So here are the contents. So this complete is the content of your header file stdio.h. And if you scroll down and go to the last, here you will find your main function printf hello world return zero. And before the main function, we included the preprocess statement stdio.h. So all this complete content, I don't know how many number of lines are there. There might be thousand lines. So these lines are from your header file, standard input output. Now your file is preprocessed. After preprocessing, what is the next step? We are going to send this preprocessed file to the compiler and compiler will generate an assembly file, right? So for that, let us execute our next command. Again, going back to the terminal. So the next command will be gcc minus s try dot i. Press enter. Now this command is going to stop my compilation process after generating the assembly file, right? So let me show you the folder again. So let us see what changes do we have in our folder now. Oh, so here I have one new file, which is try.s. And this file is your assembly code, right? Now, if you try to open this file, let me open it for you. All right, so this is your assembly file, which is now generated by the compiler, right? So as you can see that now we are having all the instructions, which are the assembly instructions. For example, str, move, add, all of these are the assembly instructions, which we are not able to understand, right? And this assembly language is similar and more closer to the machine language. Why? Because it's a low level language, right? Now I'm going to convert this assembly code into the object code. Now for that, uh, which processor is responsible for this one? Obviously the assembler. So assembler is going to take this and convert it into the object code. So now let's execute our next command. Move back to the terminal again. Now in the terminal, write down GCC minus small c and then write try dot s gcc minus c try dot s now this will stop the compilation process after generating the object code press enter now moving on back to the folder so as you can see that now here i have try dot o which is the object right and this object code, it's not readable because it's in the forms of zeros and ones. I can't read it. You also can't read it, right? But the problem is that the object code, which is now created, it is not executable. You need to have an executable binary code, right? So for that, which process is responsible or which translator is responsible? That is the linker. So now we are going to convert this non-executable object code into the executable one. So let us go back to the terminal again and write down the next command gcc minus o then I think it's capital O try dot o. And now we have the executable file ready. Let me show you the folder once again. Okay. But before that, we need to, uh, yes. 
this is going to be your executable file a dot out right if you're working on windows system then you will get the name of file as a dot exe directly but if you're working on linux or mac operating system it will be a dot out so i need to execute this a dot out to check the output so again moving on back to the terminal and just write down dot forward slash a dot out and press enter so as soon as you press enter now you get the output which is hello world right so did you see that in the process of compilation we got these files how many files are there one which is your source program two pre processed file then try.s assembly code then object code then executable object code this is how your program gets converted from c to exe file in this lecture we learned about compilation process is a process of converting your c program into the machine source code so what are the various stages available in this compilation process in the very first stage you have the role of preprocessor and what is a preprocessor preprocessor is a software which is going to preprocess the code before sending it further to the compiler then after this compiler is going to take that preprocessed code and it will convert it into the low level code which is the assembly code then after the compiler the next role is of the assembler so what the assembler will do as the name suggest assembler is going to take the assembly code and it will convert it into the object code so what is an object code object code is nothing but your byte code or the machine code but the object code which is right now getting produced by the assembler that object code is still not executable so in order to execute that object code in our computer we need to have it in executable format so for that we have a linker what the linker will do it is going to take that object code and convert it into the executable object code and pass it to the loader for loading into the memory for the execution purpose so that was all about the compilation process so in this lecture series firstly you learned the theoretical concepts of a compilation process then we actually demonstrated the concept by executing some certain commands right and but after executing those commands you were able to actually see the files which got generated into your system right and all those intermediate files they are actually removed by the compiler automatically and in the end you are left with only two files which is your source file and the executable file so that's it for the end of the lecture thank you i hope you enjoyed it have a good day